Spider-Man is a property that has been in countless movies, TV shows, video games, toys, and tons of other forms of media. Among all those properties, the best for me has always been the cartoons. That's why today I'm going to be ranking all nine Spider-Man animated movies from worst to best. <laughs> Shalom, ladies and jellyfish. Welcome back to Ask Your's Videos. Everyone loves Spider-Man, right? From all the movies, cartoons, and memes, it's a pretty amazing franchise that has made billions of dollars from all the forms of media it has gone through. It's also gone through a lot of crappy transitional periods and terrible takes at the story in these characters. And that's where I come in. From the first animated Spidey show in 1967 to the newest in 2017, there have been a total of nine Spider-Man shows. Some good, some bad, and some pretty freaking ugly. With no further ado, if you're new please be sure to subscribe and join the discord server if you want to chat more with more awesome people about spidey and i know that the spider-man fandom can be absolutely ruthless when it comes to things like this so obviously this video is all my opinion so please take it with a grain of salt and tell me your opinions in the comments down below with that said let's jump into this Well, the worst of the worst is here, and honestly, it's not that freaking bad. The story and characterization here aren't technically that bad, and has a lot of good aspects to it, like the awesome voice acting, but the visuals really bring the show down to the bottom of the barrel. Obviously, 2003 CGI is very hard to watch in 2021, and it was super distracting when I try to watch it and focus on the story, and all I see is this 3D jumbly mess. Seriously, was the budget for this so low that the CG is this bad? Reminder that Finding Nemo came out the very same year as this show did. Anyway, Anyway, I kind of get why this only ran for one season because the visual aspect of it is truly a 1 out of 10. Yeah, this show is really just boring. It's completely analogous to the amazing 67 show and offers nothing new. The stories are all super generic and repetitive, and although they bring in some new villains, it's really benign and similar to the 67 show, with a super bland cast, bland animation, bland stories, and bland everything. No wonder it only ran for one season before rightfully being cancelled. So, I'm gonna be honest, I really wasn't a fan of watching this show. While I zoomed through Spectacular in a heartbeat, for example, this show really felt slow and the build-up took absolutely forever, even though it loves to rush through every scene and feels way too fast for me to connect to anything meaningful. Like seriously, I don't have attention deficit disorder, why does everything need to move all the time? I'm really not a fan of the childish and goofy scenes they splice into a lot of parts, and while it does make the show unique in a lot of ways, well, let's just say the 2003 show was also unique in its animation. Now, now, on the other hand, it looks pretty good. I love the inclusion of some Marvel cast like Nick Fury, and it can be pretty funny at times. But overall, I really don't see how any of this is worth cancelling spectacular in favor of this mediocre mess. Well, this show is probably dabbing on me right now because I am a hater by many measures. This show is fine, the stories aren't incredible or anything, and there are tons of stupid memes and stuff they force in there, but it's not super bad either, hence why it's near the middle of this list. The animation for one is really good, and while I really dislike Peter's character design, the swing scenes and action fights are really fluid and look absolutely sick. There's just way too much childish humor and piggybacking on Ultimate for me to take this one seriously. I plan to review this show in the future because I truly don't think it's that bad of a show if you consider the circumstances that surrounded this production. Long story short, none of the Spider-Man assets could be used because they didn't have the rights, and it's a real shame because the crew working on this was super talented. The animation is super smooth and fluid for its time, and the theme song is pretty catchy and cool for the weird retro feel it has going on. I think underrated is an understatement for this show because it is actually a pretty good show in my book and had a lot of potential if it got more than 13 short episodes. Again stick around because I actually plan to review this show in full in the future. Here it is, the show I know the least about, but watching a few episodes is definitely the better of the two 1981 shows, and I love the fact that they use the potential of all these awesome Marvel characters here. We get Captain America, the X-Men, Wolverine, and obviously Spidey's amazing friend. It also has pretty solid animation, much better than the other 81 show, and it feels more risky and ambitious. <laughs> Yeah.
What can I say about this show? I've personally loved the classic episodes for years now, which is provable with my super old videos I made when I was 12 or something like that. And honestly, it's an amazing show. It's the definition of a charming show. It has super inspiring animation for its time, really fun and classic stories and characters, really nice voice acting, and hilarious memes that we all still enjoy 54 years later. I can see a lot of shows around this time being inspired by this amazing show, and it definitely inspired me as a kid growing up 50 years after this freaking aired. The 94 show might be the only thing comparable to Batman the Animated Series for the best superhero cartoon of the 90s. It feels really mature, it's probably the most nostalgic show for a lot of Spider-Man fans out there, even the younger ones, and just feels like the definitive Spider-Man cartoon that does everything it needs to do. While I loved the 60s shows as a kid, I think my introduction to Spider-Man was an episode of the show when I was like 4 or something, and some weird foreign dub as well. I actually remember it was an episode about Scorpion, which was also a hilarious portrayal of J. Jonah Jameson, who's probably at his peak in this show compared to every other Spider-Man entity. The animation is decent by today's standards, and I love the art style personally. The theme song is also fantastic, and will definitely be high on the list for my upcoming video, ranking all these shows' theme songs from worst to best. But what's even better than this? Here it is. Honestly, who didn't see this one coming? Obviously, everyone loves this show, and it was shafted big time by the fact that Disney buying Marvel in 2009 completely destroyed what this show was creating for two amazing seasons. I've talked a lot about this show before in Rashawn's video, which I'll link in the description. It's a great watch, but long story short, this show was amazing in terms of story, characters, animation, comedy, charm, and absolutely everything that a show can have. The theme song is also freaking amazing. I've been saying this for literally years, it's a masterpiece in just about every way. It's only flaw was not airing for like 12 more seasons for all of us to enjoy. With all that said, that's my list. Here it is on screen again if you want to get a refresh. And please tell me your ranking in the comments below. I'd love to see them all, and everyone is getting a heart from me. Please leave a like if you did enjoy, it really does help me out. And subscribe with the bell for more content, including two upcoming videos I have related to this. On ranking the theme songs of these shows, and reviewing Spider-Man Unlimited. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish next time. Shalom.